Okay, this video will show a pretty simple, straightforward modification that can be done to microinverters. It's particularly effective on the fanless design, like this one. They are the waterproof type. And the pros of these is that they don't need any maintenance. There's no fans to replace um, and they're waterproof. But in hot climates, their output can be significantly reduced. And so this modification using heat sinks will significantly increase your kilowatt hour production and your energy output uh, over the course of a year. This first step may or may not be necessary for your application. It depends on where the microinverter is mounted and if there's room for the heat sinks on the side opposite of the solar panels, which is ideally where the heat sink should be mounted in order to have the greatest exposure to airflow. So what's being done here is simply flipping the mounting bracket orientation. Next, you will need to prep the mating surfaces of the inverter and heat sinks in order for the thermal glue to have a strong and long lasting bond. A solvent cleaner or rubbing alcohol and a clean rag will do the job. Now open the thermal glue containers and apply a liberal amount of the glue to the mating surface of each heat sink. Try to spread it evenly in order to achieve the strongest bond as well as the highest rate of heat transfer. Apply some pressure to the heat sinks by placing a light weight on them and wait 45 minutes to an hour for the thermal glue to fully cure. To test the effectiveness of the heat sinks, two of the same inverters are made ready, one with and one without the heat sinks. The input power for the test is four 260 watt panels. With the ambient temperature around 110 degrees Fahrenheit, the surface temperature of the inverter without heat sinks measures 130 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the inverter cuts output in order to cool down. The inverter gradually comes back online as the internal temperature drops below the cutoff threshold. The output power slowly recovers from around 100 watts to 350 watts, but is still lower than ideal output because of the high temperatures. The inverter with heat sinks is prepared for the power output test by being placed in direct sunlight to heat up to a temperature similar to the inverter currently in use for an even comparison. Here I can be seen removing the inverter without heat sinks and installing the one with heat sinks. The process took about five minutes, so the change in sun position was minimal. With ambient temperatures still near 110 degrees, the inverter's surface temperature was 19 to 25 degrees cooler than before the heat sinks, and output power had increased by nearly 30%. To ensure that the inverter had reached steady state conditions, I set the camera on a tripod and pointed it at the power output meter to see if power dropped off. This video clip is a time lapse showing the result. With the power output only increasing, I checked the inverter temperatures one more time and was pleased to still see temperatures around 20 degrees lower than before the heat sinks.